Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at what it takes to get started with solar. Now this is only going to be an overview video, I'm not going to go into every single detail because that would make the video about an hour long. So just take this as a kind of overview to give you an idea of what you need. Now everything I'm going to show you is available from CDR King. You can also buy it from other shops, but the chances are you're buying the same thing, it just has a different sticker and it's twice the price. Now of course the first thing you need is a solar panel. Again, I'm not going to go into how many panels you need, how many watts, etc. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a web page, which you'll see the link down below now. And if you go there, you'll be able to get more information about how many solar panels, how big a battery and so on. Okay, so number one, you need a solar panel and this is a 50 watt solar panel. Number two, you need a battery. Now this battery is tiny, there's no way you'd ever use this with a 50 watt solar solar panel but it's not really convenient for me to carry around a big huge battery to this location so I just brought along this little battery as an example. The next thing you need is a charge controller. What this does is take the voltage from the solar panel, smooth it out and use it to charge your battery at the correct voltage. This helps maintain your battery to make sure it doesn't get overcharged over discharge and other things like that. So you definitely need a charge controller. And finally, you need a way of getting the power out of your battery. Now you have two options here. You can go DC, which is native to the battery. Basically, you just connect this to your battery and you've got cigarette lighter sockets just like inside your car. And then you can plug in car USB chargers, car fans, and so on. That's the most efficient way of getting power out of your battery. The next option, which is probably gonna be favorable to most people, is a DC to AC inverter. Now these are just using cars, but you can also use them for solar. This clips onto your battery and it converts the battery DC to an AC voltage. So you see here, I've got a standard wall socket like you'd find in a house. I've also got a USB port. Now this does waste a little bit of power, so you only really wanna use this if you're gonna be powering AC stuff. So what I do now is bring the camera in closer so you can see an idea about how you actually set all of this up. Now most solar panels will already come with the wires connected to the junction box on the back. If they don't, you have to add your own. Now there is special solar wire that can stand up to the sun um, and so on and so on. But for this test, I'm just using cheap um, wiring that you'd use for a car. And it works okay. It might not be as good long run, but it, it's okay for a short term. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just strip back these old leads to make sure it's fresh copper. So now I've got the fresh copper, I can put it into the charge controller. Now the charge controller is very easy to understand. You can see that it shows you where the solar goes, where the battery goes and where your load, which is stuff you wanna power. So I'm just gonna connect the solar panel here. Now, if you've got wire like this, which is identical, you won't know which one is positive and which one's negative. So for that, we're gonna use this voltmeter just to find out quickly. Of course, it would help if I put some sun on the panel. Okay, so now I know which one is positive and which one's negative. Negative in my left hand, positive in my right. And all I'm gonna do is screw the wires into these terminals. Now, like I said, I'm not going into a lot of detail here because I'm not talking about using proper terminal connectors. I'm not talking about fusing. I'm not gonna go into any of that. I'm just gonna go into the very basics to give you enough of a rough idea of what you need to do. And then you can research on your own or you can check out my site for more information. So now my solar panel is hooked up to my charge controller. The next thing to do is connect the charge controller to my battery. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this crocodile clip lead to connect to the battery, which is here. Sorry, it's kind of grassy here. You can't easily see everything, but it's the only location I've really got where I've got a lot of space to play with and that has access to the sun. So, okay, that's connected to my battery. And then I'll just clip the other sides onto the charge controller where it says battery. And now my little light has come on on the charge controller to say it's charging the battery. Now this battery is actually faulty. Um, basically it's been run down so many times that it's no good anymore. But I think it should hopefully still do for what we want to do today. So literally just in a couple minutes we've got our solar panel set up connected to our charge controller which is charging our battery. Now we could leave that and we wouldn't ever have to do anything. This panel will go through the charge controller which will charge our battery. It'll make sure that the battery never overcharges and that's it basically. But how about when you want to use the power? Now for small loads, you can connect them straight to your charge controller. You can see here it has a load. And some of these also have a, a light switch built in where it senses when it gets dark and then it will turn your load on automatically. So when you're buying a charge controller, if that's something you want, you might want to see if it's already built into the charge controller. So I could connect this right here and I could start plugging in my USB chargers, my car fan, things like that. But that's not very interesting. I think it's more fun if we look at AC which is what most people probably want. 
Now, when you connect an inverter, which converts your DC battery to AC power, you normally connect this directly to the battery because running too much power for your charge controller is gonna break it. You have to check how much output or how much load you can connect to your charge controller. Um, and you'll notice the terminals are very small. So if you tried to connect something like this, it wouldn't be very practical anyway. So I'm gonna connect our inverter directly to the battery. So you can see I've just clipped it on there and if we turn this on it should hopefully kick into life. Now obviously you can't hear this because it's very windy here, I've got cars going by, but I can hear that the fan has kicked in. And what I'm going to do is connect something to the USB port just to make sure that it is working. So I have this USB light bulb, this is from CDR King, everything's from CDR King, it's a happy CDR King day. So I'll connect this to the inverter. Now even though this battery is dead, because the panel is pumping power through the charge controller and then going to the battery, we are managing to run this. But ideally you'd actually use a battery that has you know, some capacity in it. Now, I don't know how easily you'll be able to see this on the camera, but this is lighting up. So there you can see it is lit up and uh, it's powering okay. Of course that's a very small load, it's just a small USB bulb. So let's try and plug something into the AC output. So what I have now is just a regular household bulb. This is a 9 watt Philips LED bulb and I've just got this little adapter that converts it to a two prong plug. So let's plug this into our inverter and see if it powers. And there you go. Again, I don't know how easily you can see that on camera, but it is lit up. So it does have no problem lighting it. Of course, you could connect other things here. You could connect fans, you can connect all kinds of things. It really depends on how big your battery bank is, how much your uh, inverter can handle, how many solar panels you have and everything like that. And like I said, I'm not gonna go into super loads of details on that because I couldn't cover it in one video. So I hope you found the video useful. Sorry if I didn't go into too much detail, it's just not practical to put into one video because if I make an hour long video, no one will actually watch it and they'll just ask the same questions anyway. So if you do have any questions, put them in the comments section down below and I'll be happy to help you. Also check out this link because I'm gonna put a lot of information there and I'm gonna keep that page updated with you know new promos, new equipment, recommendations for battery size and so on and so on. So if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe for future watching.